All right, guys, welcome to the Fit Coaching Podcast today. And today we're talking a little bit about how to exercise when you're sick or how can you stay active and, and not lose too much or even boost your immunity whenever you're not feeling well, you're feeling a little under the weather, you're feeling a little bit sick or if you feel like a sickness is coming on. So this is going to be really interesting. So it'll be fun. It might change your paradigm a little bit and what you've been taught a little bit before in the past, be it by your parents or by your doctor. So let's dive into this episode today. All right, so the question that we're answering today is, should you exercise when you're sick? Are you feeling a little bit under the weather? Well, the answer is maybe. It depends. It depends on how you're feeling. depends if the sickness is progressing. But what is true is that exercise can have a protective effect. It can have an immune boosting effect on your body. So super cool. How does it go to go into that? So I mean, let's, let's just kind of understand like the body's immune system a little bit better, okay? So you have some physical things about your body, some physical barriers that help you to, uh, you know, strengthen your immune system and help keep your immune system running. One is just like the physical barriers, like your nose, like the nose hairs and stuff you have in there, the physical structures, the mucus and everything that, that goes into your lungs and everything that, that allows stuff to get into your bloodstream. This whole na nasal factor here that actually helps prevent stuff from getting in. That's one way of keeping germs from getting in. Another one is your gut. Your gut is one of the biggest parts of your immune system because so much goes into your mouth, the food and everything, so many things can get in there. Um, and so your, your gut is a huge factor in protecting your body and having strong immunity there. So if your gut isn't doing well, then you're probably not feeling well either. So you, you can get sicker easier. So it can be uh, like your stomach acids, the mucus in your gut, it can, you know, everything in there, even this, the physical barriers in your digestive system keeps the wrong things from getting into your system and get those things passed right through, okay? And so for an extreme example, be like if, uh, if you eat something that's got you know, something that really doesn't agree, you're going to have what's called food poisoning, where your body is just going to flush it out immediately. That's an important part of our body's natural ability to keep those bad bugs out of our body. Another thing is just like the protective cells. I mean, you have white blood cells, you have these specific cells that are designed to just totally destroy invaders you know these these things that are toxic toxic to our system they'll go and they'll attack them they'll literally like eat it they'll consume that um intoxicated cell that contaminated cell like if if a red blood cell gets something in it that really shouldn't be there then that white blood cell is able to identify it and totally destroy it pretty cool and uh and our body our bones are always creating new red blood cells to keep the freshness uh, the fresh, healthy cells turning over. So pretty cool. And there's there's an adaptive immunity to our um, to our bodies as well. This is where our body is is creating the specific um, you know antibodies uh, to be able to identify. There's and anti antibodies are basically just like almost like a, a computer program. It's like it's a, it's ability to search. It's the ability to identify stuff that's been harmful in the past, and your body knows that that's going to be harmful again in, in the future. And so. By having these antibodies, your body is like, yep, that's a form substance we've seen before. Let's not let that stay around. We're going to get that out right away. And so once you had that immunity, you're likely to not have to not get sick from that again because it'll be eradicated before it even ever becomes a problem. So pretty cool part of what our body can do. But what about exercise? Like how can that be protective? Well, it upregulates our system. It, it increases our uptake of good things and it gets our body moving so it just like improves our overall ability to turn over good nutrients and turn over cells and keep uh, things flowing through our body and to, to keep that immunity high and so exercising is an important factor in improving and maintaining a high immunity people who are regularly physically active have better immunity than people who are sedentary or overweight or obese or have poor nutrition and so uh, what about when you do get sick we all get sick from time to time you know, we get all kinds of different sicknesses, whether it be a minor cold or a significant virus or something like that. And so what should you do whenever you do get sick, whenever that comes on? Well, let's consider uh, the different kinds of sickness, okay? So if you're getting like really badly sick, like immobilized, like uh, 
you know, like you're, you're, you're throwing up, you're vomiting, you have like a really, really bad fever, then it does make sense to just rest and because that's the most important thing your body needs right now. And one of the most restorative things for, your, uh, for you whenever you're that sick is just sleep and then uh, making sure you do as much as you can to get any kind of fluids and electrolytes to let your body work through that and just eating small, small things whenever you get through that. But what about exercise? Our focus is on exercise today. And so um, if you have that significant sickness, then you're gonna wanna limit the activity. But whenever you're just like sort of minor sickness or you have, you feel like something's sort of coming on, then that can be a good time to actually do a little bit of moderate activity. And so what kind of stuff should you do when you're sick? Uh, some simple things that you can do that can really be restorative for your body, can help you beat it before it gets any worse. Um, it would be things like walking or light jogging or even swimming and biking um, or doing things like yoga um, or other sort of martial arts t- types movements that are slow like Tai Chi, things like that, uh, where you're doing more gradual movements. It's not going to get your heart rate overly high. It's going to be just getting your body moving through different positions. It's going to help you move and, and get that blood flowing a little bit. That's going to actually help your immunity. It's going to be immune boosting. Um, and it's, it's amazing to see that studies have shown that, you know, people who do some moderate light activity like this actually have a lower risk of infection than someone who is completely sedentary or someone who is over exercising. So you have like both extremes there. You have someone who's doing absolutely nothing. If they start getting sick, they're going to get fully sick. You know, they're going to stay sick, you know, or if you have someone who's over exercising, you're doing way too much. Uh, let's say like you feel a cold coming on you go and you just do this crushing high intensity workout then you're probably going to end up getting a full-on cold within 24 hours it's actually going to come on fully Uh, because um, that sedentary like sedentariness or really high intensity or even overtraining it has like an immune suppressing response Um, with the sedentary Sedentariness can actually like make that sort of chronic where you get sick often and easily while uh, really high intensity exercise generally in general is going to be immunoprotective, but there is a short window in time, especially if you've been doing a lot of high intensity workouts back to back where um, that short window after a high intensity workout, you do have sort of an immunosuppression because your body is just like, I'm going to take a little bit of focus off of, you know, protecting against germs. And I got to recover from this high intensity workout. I'm going to restore the muscles a little bit, get some energy and fuel there. And so there is a short period of time post-workout where your um, immune system is a little bit suppressed, which is uh, why you might feel like you sort of have uh, some cold symptoms after doing a really hard workout, harder one than you've done in quite a while. Uh, But overall, exercise does have a protective effect. If you do get sick, um, the type of exercise you want to prioritize is just like that moderate intensity stuff. You know, take a walk, get on the treadmill, you know, go for a short cycle ride, um, get outside in the sun and move around, do some minor chores, you know, things that's not going to get you too sweaty or too worn out. Um, if you do something vigorous, that's okay. You know, vigorous is like challenging, intense, like, but keep the in- intensity like relatively low compared to, um, what you call like a high intense intensity workout and make it really short. Like if you're going to do some push-ups and air squats or something just to get yourself moving, then don't do it for more than 10 minutes and don't move, don't do uh, too many sets. Don't feel like you're going to, you don't want to like um, get overly tired. You know, if you start feeling like you raised your core temperature a little bit and you broke just a little bit of a sweat, then great, that's enough. Um, and so that means you want to sort of avoid a heavy strength training or high intensity interval training or significant endurance training, uh, any kind of sports or uh, getting out in extreme temperatures like extreme hot, extreme cold, uh, whenever you're feeling sick. Cause those are actually just gonna uh, beat your body down. You gotta take the whole body into con- consideration. Like um, I'll have another podcast about this coming up soon about strain, about overall stress. If you have multiple things weighing on you, like you're, you're, when you're sick, that's a strain on your body. And there's stress that comes with that, like, oh, I'm missing out work. You might feel some strain from that. Um, or you even feel strain because you're like, oh, man, I'm missing out on my workouts. Like, I don't want to miss all that stuff. And so I feel like I'm losing my gains or whatever it is. Uh, not having much food in your system is a strain on the, bottom, on the body. So um, these are all things to take into consideration. So to add another strain by doing some training, some high intensity training while you're sick is only going to make things worse. It's going to 
take away from your body's need to prioritize uh, getting better and healing from that sickness, whatever you have. Um, and it's it's only gonna by taking away that priority, but like to make it force um, some focus on whatever exercise or recovering from that is only gonna make you feel worse. You're gonna feel more sick. And so, uh, but doing some light activity, doing a little bit of um, non-stressful activity, just a little bit of movement, getting the body moving, it can actually help improve your immunity um, and beat that sickness faster. Uh, so this is important for all of us to know because like as we get older, like our innate immune response uh, actually goes down a little bit. Uh, but the more active you can stay throughout life, the, the, the less sick you'll be. You won't be often as sick. And so like the older we get, if we're able to stay active regularly, that's going to be protective for our immune system. Um, and even if we get enough sleep, that's another thing. Like if our body really needs sleep, that's our best time to recover. If you're not getting enough sleep over time, you're going to get sick easier. <laughs> um, when there's more extreme changes in temperature, you're more likely to get sick because the changes in pressures pressures and temperature like an extreme hot environment an extreme cold environment and one that's going up and down quite a bit um, can actually affect our immunity and things like our mood if you're fighting de uh, depress depression or serious stress in in your life because of your social social situations and circumstances and stuff that can affect your immunity these all all things go into the overall strain of our bodies and so uh, it's kind of like going back to the episode I had on deep health it all is a factor in our fitness and so if you're feeling sick uh, this can be a good time to work on some of those things that maybe you've neglected because of how busy you are. Uh, work on those other things that may be stressing you out. Like get some light movement, but work on getting some quality food, some quality sleep, some quality hydration, and take the time to think through the other things in your life that are stressing you, uh, th putting strain on your mind and your heart uh, to address like your emotional health and stuff like that. It's a good time to sort of rest mentally, spiritually, emotionally, whenever you're sick, cause it gives you a reason to pause because you're not spending time doing exercise. You might be slowing down the work you're doing. That's a chance for you to recover holistically so you can get back to exercise and training in a better state than you were before getting sick and learn from that. Like, was there something in my lifestyle that got me sick there in the first place? And so here's a, Here's some specifics of like how to how to address exercise in so like stages of sickness. So like let's say it's day one, you're starting to feel a little off. You're like, man, um, I don't feel 100% today. I feel like I'm having a few symptoms. Like maybe my throat's a little scratchy and sore. Sore. I'm coughing a little bit. Maybe I have a runny nose or I feel a little congested. Uh, some light exercise will be fine on that kind of day. You know. Uh, not going too intense. You don't want to just go all out on some strength and exercise work or some interval work or something like that. But um, some light exercise, dial it down to that moderate to light intensity exercise would be great. If you have like really significant symptoms on day one, you wake up, you're like, God, my body hurts so bad. I have a headache. I got a fever. Um, I have diarrhea or like I'm vomiting, then don't exercise. Uh, common sense. You're like, you're, you're not going to be able to exercise that much anyways because you're feeling pretty bad. Uh, so, so let's go to day two. If you're still feeling pretty good, you don't really have a fever. It's just sort of like, meh, not feeling super great. Still, still feeling um, off. You know, most of your symptoms are sort of like a, above the neck, like still a congestion, things like that, a little bit sore throat, all that. Then 30, 45 minutes of light exercise, just like some yoga or walking or some light jogging or a little bit of cycling can be good. Get outside, get in the sun, get a little bit of activity. It can be really restorative for you. But don't hit the those intense weights or anything again um, until you really feel better, like you're coming, uh, coming off of that. But if you have worse symptoms, like they progressively get worse. So like day two, they're worse than they were day one. Like you have... Um, a temperature, you have a high temperature or you have like increased coughing or diarrhea and vomiting, then don't exercise. Just, just chill. Get the rest that you need. Um, let's move to day three. If day three um, is is there like your, if you are tracking heart rate at all and you notice that your, your heart rate, it hasn't really increased at all um, from day one and two, um, then feel free to get 45 to 60 minutes of light to moderate exercise. Maybe you do a little bit of of weight training, but at a very light weight, still relatively moderate intensity. Um, but as long as you don't have any fever or any other increased symptoms, or even like you feel like your symptoms are decreasing a little bit, feel free to hit some exercise that day, but we're still keeping it moderate. Uh, but if you have 
like fever and any other symptoms, then man, by day three, you might want to consider seeing a doctor. You might want to consider like, okay, this, uh, my body's not really getting over this by itself. Maybe I need some antibiotics or maybe I need some kind of, a, um, you know, some actual medicine, some, a doctor and some pharmaceutical medicine actually get over this. Um, especially if your symptoms are getting worse than they were in day one or two. Um, day four, if, uh, things are, are getting less then yeah. Um, let's maybe take a rest day to see if you can get over it hundred percent because you just exercise for a few days in a row. And then if you wake up the next day, day five, and you're feeling good, then yeah, go back to the high intensity weights, feel good, go for it. Uh, but if you're not getting relief, your symptoms are prolonging by day four, then you definitely need to see a doctor. You definitely need to consult the doctor and get some help there to get uh, to the bottom of what that is. So that's just sort of like some specifics of like, let's say day one to four, like you're sort of triaging like how you're doing. And so if you notice something's coming on, then let's dial back the activity and over the next couple of days, monitor things and you know stay active if you can. If your symptoms are getting worse, then dial it back and rest. If your symptoms are improving, then you can sort of, you know, do a little bit more activity. Try and see if it, uh, see what you can do. And if, uh, and then eventually take a rest day to get it over at 100%, and then you can get back to your normal intensity. And in the grand spectrum of things, if uh, if you're getting a little bug here and there and you decrease your activity, this ultimately helps you recover to be back to 100% to be able to do better intensity once you get back to that weight training or, or exercise training, high intensity training, uh, whatever that may be. And so this is just a way to understand your immunity. Like, can you exercise when you're sick? Sure, uh, if you're feeling well enough and if your symptoms are bad enough, then it's a good sign from your body. Like, take a chill pill, let's rest a little bit, let's recover. Because in the grand scheme of things, it's not gonna limit your gains that much and if you do too much then you're only going to make your symptoms worse it's going to take you out for longer so this is just how you can be conscious of like how you can be healthy while you're sick how you can improve your immunity how you can maintain that and how you can get back to that high intensity exercise and improving your fitness gains from wh wherever you are and, um, and not limiting your progress overall uh, over time so i hope you enjoyed this podcast today Give me a rating, get, shoot, give me a shout out, shoot me whatever you else you guys want to hear about, what specific topics would benefit you most. I want to pr create content that's going to help you the most. And definitely, if you need more guidance in this or if you, if you need some accountability, if you want a coach who will come alongside you to build a program that fits you and your goals, that's going to be client-centered um, and communicate with you the way that you need, then give me a shout out. You can visit me at linfit.com or you can... Um, Find me on social media at uh, on Instagram at caleb.linfit, and I'd love to start that conversation with you, and so we can go from there to see like how can you improve today? What's a, a specific action step that you can take today that you can start being accountable to, so you can actually make some progress to move towards your, whatever your specific goals are? And so, thanks for tuning in today. I hope this this episode was really beneficial for you, and you guys are awesome. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.